Hey everyone, this is Small Joyful Things. As always, my name is Claire. Uh, I go out to thrift stores or garage sales or estate sales or, you know, basically anywhere. I find small things that make me happy or tell me a story and I bring them back here, find out as much as I can about them and then tell you guys about it. So, here we go. So today I have this for you. Uh, I may have to hold it up to the camera so you can see it correctly. Um, I know it looks kind of un unusual. This is a belt buckle. It is made out of brass. I hope you can see what it's written. Anacortes Brass Works Limited, 1985. Handmade solid brass. Anacortes Washington, USA. There is a number beneath that that I can't quite make out because it's got some, it's got a little bit of damage here underneath, underneath part of the buckle. Yeah, put that down. As always with the ruler, it is about three and a quarter inches by just shy, just over two and a quarter. It is, I mean, it's quite small, it's only a belt buckle. Now, so where did I get this? I bought this for two dollars in a thrift store um, because I found it interesting. Mostly I was looking at it thinking, this is oddly specific. <laughs> for a belt buckle. I mean, it's obvious that, that it, you know, that's what it is. It's definitely a belt buckle. But it's just like, this seems to have a, like a lot of symbology on it. I want to know what it means. And luckily for us, this tells us a lot of information about what it is and where it came from. And that meant that I could go looking for it. And here we go. Now, it, I've got to say, it was actually news to me that uh, like oil field buckles are a thing and they're collectible and this has been uh, apparently a tradition that goes back quite a long time it's like if you got to work in the oil fields you can get a belt buckle that kind of either commemorates like the projects that you worked on or you know tells you you know there's a few different varieties like some of them are about like you know the experience of working on the oil fields and there's so many different kinds like i mean there's there are so many different belt buckles some of them are kind of <laughs> I'm going to knock the camera. Some of them are kind of funny. <laughs> so very, very interesting. Um, this one, this one, however, by Anna Cortes, it seems that Anna Cortes did a lot of the ones where they were basically made belt buckles for a specific project or a specific thing. So now the question is, what was this project? Let me get that away. Now, did some reading on this, okay? Um, what I know is that the Peace River oil sands are one of the major oil deposits in Alberta. And they're about the middle of the Alberta of Alberta and up to the north bit. Now they would not be considered the the biggest deposit, I think, and they're they're very they're very deep. Um, there is a lot of oil. There's a lot of oil in the oil sands there, but it, they, you need to use a specific technology to actually get it out. It's not like you can just you can't just kind of get it off the surface like you could in the, the other oil fields. And around like the, sometime in the mid 1970s, um, Shell. And this is how we know that actually Shell is involved. They have their logo clearly right there. Shell got involved with this and they basically built uh, what was called the In-Situ, uh, the Peace River In-Situ project, if, if I remember the name correctly, and where they used a thing called steam injection pumps in order to get the, the oil out of the oil sands. Um, this is just a new thing, apparently this is a new thing, this is basically how they get oil out of oil sands that doesn't involve fracking. So make it that way as you will. But what makes this little thing kind of interesting, right? Now this is obvi obviously it's dated to 1985, okay? And it says it's the expansion project. So so the, the wells that were there initially, they would have been pumping like 3,500 barrels a day or something like that. This is the expansion project that takes them up to uh, just over 10,000 barrels a day. And what I find kind of curious, because this, this pattern here was the thing that I was wondering about and there was a lot of Googling trying to figure out what the hell this was, because a lot of this, this is kind of we're getting into like esoteric oil technology that I'm got to say I don't quite understand. And and that's kind of crazy considering the fact that I actually do have a degree in geology. But anyway, what this is, uh, these little hexagon shapes, okay, this is actually a pattern of, of, of wells, a pattern of like where they would have planted the wells and actually drilled down. Um, I found a few scientific papers that actually describe it. So this pattern of hexagons, the first one here, this is called like the lucky seven pattern. And there's something, they have some research where basically this is the optimal way to situate your wells if you want to actually drill into the, in, you know, for oil in this way. So the expansion project, you can see the marks 
here. And I will guess, and I'm guessing a little bit at this, that you know they they added on these extra six wells here in order to bring up production in some way. I I'm assuming I can't actually find out much about the how or why or what happened. Like the stuff isn't available online, so I really don't know. I just found it incredibly interesting and and also very like like again very specific. You know, this little belt buckle essentially tells you like where it is, what they were doing, the companies involved, the the things they were actually doing, like the project itself. And then the back of it tells you the exact date, who made it, who made this little belt buckle, and then the brass works, where, where, where it was actually made. I just, I like it. This, is, this, this belt buckle tells an entire story in its own right. Now, the nice thing that I, the one nice thing, the nice thing that I found about it, this, is that the Anacortes Brasswork plant, this, this brass works here, this is still in operation in Anacortes, Washington. And if you get one of their belt buckles and it breaks, you can send it back to them and they will fix it for you for free. <laughs> that is just a story that I found online. I was researching like who's the Anacortes Brassworks, like are they still around? Turns out that they are and apparently they're quite fond of their quite fond of their belt buckles, which is which is kind of nice. It's kind of cool. So the question, am I going to keep this? I'm going to say probably not. <laughs> I don't wear belts and I certainly don't wear belts that would have a need for a buckle like this. Um, I'll be putting it up on eBay. I'm hoping that a collector of this type of belt buckle will be interested in it. I have tested with a magnet. It is pure, pure brass and it, it is in very nice condition considering that it's almost 40 years old. So here we go. Here's our story and weird as it is, this is a small joyful thing. So thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.